This is your first call up since the uh, Brazil game in August, um, if I'm not mistaken. And um, this is also the first time since then that the best available team has been called up because you know either it was a U.S. based team or the MLS players weren't there. Um, so it's been seven or eight months or whatever it is since the first string has really been together. What's the value in having the best available team together? Um, well, from a coaching standpoint, it's always ideal. Um, in football nowadays, there's a lot of impedances um, with, with getting a, is that a word? <laughs> um, to getting a roster together. So having the ability to choose from any player uh, in your roster is, is a big value. For us, um, the importance of this game is the ability to prepare for what uh, will likely be, well, could be a qualifying year and is a Gold Cup year. And we have at least three very good games before the Gold Cup comes and we want to make sure we take advantage of them. Talk about the coaching selecting from the best players. It seems like, can you speak a little bit to the depth of this, of this pool now, especially in the midfield, it seems like Bob's got more choices than ever and, and some real dilemmas as far as you know who to play and, and, and what kind of formation to use to get the right combination of guys out there. Well it seems very recently um, we're finding quite a few guys that have either uh, either are natural born Americans or have parents that are Americans and, and it's it's helping build our pool and, and there's a quite a few guys in this camp that I haven't been in camp with before that I don't know a lot about. Um, but that are very good players, promising players. Um, as far as the midfield goes, we have, uh, I guess, a dilemma is one way to put it, that a lot of teams would love to have. And um, that's what arguably our most consistent player of late, Stewart, um, not being here. So uh, it's, it's good. It's good to have choices, good to have options, and it gives us flexibility to play in a lot of different ways, which we haven't always had. Landon, um, obviously you weren't with the last two friendlies because you were busy with MLS and getting ready for the Galaxy season. But have you seen the film, or at least the matches, with Juan Agudelo? And uh, can you give any similarities or differences between him and when Josie got started with the national team? Um, I have watched the games with Juan. Um, have had the chance to train with him this week. And initially, I've been impressed. Um, I think as much impressed with his demeanor as what he does on the field. He's certainly very talented, um, but as we all know, talent doesn't always get you where you want to go. So uh, our job is to make sure that he progresses in the right way. All of us, that's on all of us. And uh, But early impressions uh, are very good. Any yeah. So how do you feel about the prospect of playing against Messi? Is he the, is it, does he give you a sense of excitement for challenging yourself against someone like that, or is there just a, an element of fear about how you're entertaining? Um, there's no element of fear. Um, there's very there's very few players in the world that can do what he, did, he does, and maybe only one. And the um, for us, we, we play a lot of high level games, we play against a lot of very good players, but in my opinion he's in a different class and it makes it challenging for sure, um, but I think we enjoy it and the reality is, is there's no defender on our team, there's likely no defender in the world that can defend him one on one and we, uh, we have to make sure that collectively we're making it difficult on him. Um, at the same time, this isn't a game where we're showing up with the other 65,000 people and watching Messi play. This is a game we're going to play in and try to win, and that's our approach. Is anyone particular of the new guys? Anyone particularly stand out, surprising you? Um, no, I mean it's it's hard to be surprised by anything at this point. You know, I've, I've been in a lot of camps and seen a lot of guys come and go. Um, There's certain guys with with a lot of ability. Um, I, I don't uh, I don't get too uh, 
too excited about ability because um, how it translates into a big game, into an important game is a whole different level and how that translates over the course of a career is, is what's impressive to me. So um, I'm optimistic when I see a lot of these young guys. They're certainly further along from a talent standpoint than we were at that age. And um, we, as a whole, have to make sure that they're progressing in the right way mentally too so that um, the future is good for us. You said, you said they're further along uh, from a talent standpoint. Are they also further along in sort of the soccer IQ, would you say? Um, not necessarily further along from a soccer IQ. In some cases, yes. Um, in some cases, maybe no. But uh, I think they're further along from a professionalism standpoint, knowing that this is a job and it's not, hey, we're going to kick the ball around every day. I think they get that more so than I certainly did at that age and that a lot of us younger guys did at that age because the game is more professional now. Um, they've had the ability to grow up watching Major League Soccer, watching games around the world. They have an idea that it's um, it's a real job and, and they seem to get that a lot earlier now. Soccer IQ of this country seems to be going up. Even in three years, do you expect a different kind of crowd at the Metal At what? Oh, at the Metal uh, yeah, um, it, it's all about awareness, and um, there's there's a lot more people that I either come across on a day-to-day -day basis via Facebook, Twitter, via friends um, that are new fans to our game over the last year or so, and it takes people like that a while to really start to understand the game, but you, I can see in uh, just acquaintances I've made, people that are in the, I guess, sports industry that are learning the game and understanding the game more and more, and it takes time, but there's no doubt that our fan base is growing and the IQ of our fan base is continuing to grow. Soccer IQ. We'll do one more in English. <coughs> uh, going back to Messi, uh, is it just journalists and fans that are in awe of him, or players like yourself, when you see his first goal against Arsenal, do you ask yourself, how did you do that? Um, I'm not in awe of him. Uh, I'm incredibly impressed with things he can do. See, plays that he makes are plays that uh, someone like myself would make if I was playing like in a high school soccer game. And uh, you can pull off some of these plays from time to time when you're messing around. Um, but he pulls them off in Champions League games, in World Cup games, in international games, and he does it. Uh, Comfortably. And that's what's so impressive about him. And um, he's, he is enjoyable to watch, um, not fun to play against, that's for sure. But he's just a talent that doesn't come around very often, and I think we can all respect that. Um, you know, there's not a whole lot of new moves that are being invented in the soccer world. The game's been around forever, so. Um, but the ability to do those things in a real game doesn't happen.